If you were to ask someone who their favorite Spider-Man villain is, I doubt they would say the Vulture. In fact, I'd put money on it. Adrian Toomes, the Vulture, is one of Spider-Man's longest-running enemies, the first supervillain the Wallcrawler ever fought, among the pages of The Amazing Spider-Man No. 2 for May of 1963. In no way is the Vulture terrible or boring, but I feel he does get lost in the shuffle with the likes of the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, and Venom, even the other members of the Sinister Six team, which he is usually a part of. There's just something unthreatening about an elderly man clad in feathers, stealing jewels or other such valuables, a senior getting beat up by some youngster with radioactive blood. The poor man probably has osteoporosis for Christ's sake. His bones are too brittle to do battle with superheroes hundreds of feet in the air. Now I'm not trying to bash the character, I do enjoy the Vulture, and we have seen some more serious and intimidating versions of him over the years, but I am attempting to provide some perspective to everything. I feel the Vulture has less appeal than a lot of other Spider-Man villains. Most people don't care for him all that much. He's tossed aside, not given as much attention. I think if anyone were going to adapt the Vulture outside of comics and into the mainstream, especially in live-action film, they needed to modernize him, take him far more serious than many of his original appearances, and of course, make him intimidating, a real threat. And honestly, I don't think that was something many people associated with this character, him being intimidating. At least, I didn't. Sam Raimi's unproduced Spider-Man 4, set to release in May of 2011, was going to feature the Vulture as the primary antagonist, buying out the Daily Bugle, which resulted in Spider-Man having to inadvertently kill him somehow. Ah yes, death at the end, a common trend with those movies. Sources claim that John Malkovich was in talks to play the villain, and Anne Hathaway was going to play Felicia Hardy, who would not turn into Black Cat, but instead a new villain called the Vulturess. However, in 2013, Sam Raimi denied those rumors, and said Hardy would have in fact become Black Cat in the film. Spider-Man 4 was of course cancelled, with Sony rebooting the franchise in 2012 with The Amazing Spider-Man. It was a shame we never got to see Raimi's take on the Vulture character, not to mention Mysterio played by Bruce Campbell, god fucking damn it. But thankfully, both characters have since been adapted into the MCU, pretty damn well might I add, and we can all rest easy. The Vulture, specifically, played by Michael Keaton, is one of my favorite performances in the MCU. I think as a villain, he's also one of the strongest the franchise has ever produced. Before we get into all of that though, let's first dive into some of the backstory regarding the Vulture character. Adrian Toomes was an electrical engineer and inventor, the former business partner of one Gregory Bestman at their small electronics firm. Toomes had designed a special electromagnetic harness that allowed its wearer to fly, and wanted to share this breakthrough with Bestman. However, Toomes learned that Bestman had been embezzling money from their company, and after taking violent action against him, Toomes was fired without enough resources or influence within his own company to do anything about it. With the little money he had left, Toomes continued working on his harness, realizing it not only allowed him to fly, but gave him increased levels of strength as well. He learned that Bestman intended on selling their business, and in retaliation, Toomes dons a vulture costume, breaks into the lab, destroys it, and steals his money back. Afterwards, he decided to pursue a criminal career professionally. In 2017's Spider-Man Homecoming, the Vulture's origin is faithful to the source material, with some interesting changes that not only modernize it for current audiences, but also strengthen it by connecting it to other elements found within the MCU. Adrian Toomes is the owner of Bestman Salvage, a company contracted to clean up the remnants of any incidents that occur in New York City. Following the Battle of New York, the finale between the Avengers and the alien race known as the Chitauri from the first Avengers film, his company goes to work, cleaning up the damage citywide. Toomes and his men are approached by a group of agents. 
telling them that the new Department of Damage Control, a joint venture between the U.S. government and Tony Stark, would be taking over, having somehow secured the contract to do so, despite Toombs' company having it originally. This blow proves fatal to Bestman Salvage, and runs it out of business, leaving Toombs and his men without a job. Disgruntled, feeling cheated out of their own livelihoods, not being able to provide for themselves or their families, Toombs and his men decide to keep what little Chitauri tech they have left, to create a special flying suit with turbine-powered wings. With it, and later tools and gadgets they design, they spend the next four years stealing advanced technology from Stark Industries following Avengers Battles, and use it to create weapons they sell on the black market. The motivations behind Adrian Toomes in this film are very realistic, they're believable. Out of all the villains found within the MCU, his feel the most understandable, the most human. He's a man who felt cheated out of his job. The little guy fucked over by people with a lot more money than him, a lot more power than him, and he just wants his cut. Much like Adrian Toomes in the comics, he was powerless when his life and source of income came crashing down. I also love the literal idea of him becoming a vulture, a scavenger. His sole purpose is survival, providing his family with food on the table by any means necessary. While many of us aren't willing to become a criminal, we won't cross that line, you can see the reasoning behind Toombs' actions in this film. A lot of us can relate to them. All he's doing is looking out for himself and his family, and unfortunately, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there in many instances. You need to do whatever it takes to stay afloat and survive sometimes. That's the sad and honest truth. In Spider-Man Homecoming, the wall crawler uncovers the illegal activities of Adrian Toomes and his men, which puts the Vulture and Spider-Man on a collision course with one another. Toomes is revealed to be the father of Peter's girlfriend in the film, Liz, and as he drives them to the homecoming dance, deduces that Peter is in fact Spider-Man. This sequence is one of the most brilliantly written, shot, and performed in the entire MCU, at least in my opinion. It goes from being cheerful, to unsettling, and then downright frightening. You can cut the tension in that car with a knife. The fact that Toomes figures out the identity of Spider-Man so quickly and believably, piecing all the clues together, makes him a very competent antagonist. I love when villains are written this way. It doesn't insult the intelligence of the audience. Michael Keaton is one of my favorite actors, and he does so much with just his eyes alone in this scene. It's incredible. Toomes ends up threatening Peter when they arrive at the dance, telling him that if he interferes with his business again, that he will kill him and everyone he loves. Vulture is a family man first and foremost, putting his family above everything else in his life. Peter, as Spider-Man, would end up saving his daughter earlier in the film, which is something Toomes doesn't forget. That's why, when he is imprisoned at the end and Matt Gargan wants to know Spider-Man's identity, Toomes doesn't tell him. He feels he owes Spider-Man one, that or he wants to kill him himself, whatever works. Something I really enjoy about the MCU Vulture is his design. In the early comics, the Vulture's look was goofy, to say the least. Adapting it in that way for a live-action film in this day and age, I don't think it would have worked well at all. Over the years, Marvel tried to switch up his design quite a bit. They gave the Reniero Drago version of the Vulture a helmet, but I don't know if any of these changes really worked in making Vulture more intimidating. They beefed him up whenever they could, in the hopes of distancing him from that senile old man outlook audiences had towards the character. And they tried, they really did, and some depictions did make him fairly threatening, I will admit that. Some even made his suit more mechanical, like in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, which was again the Reniero Drago version, but I knew if they were going to adapt him onto the big screen, they would need to do something drastic, something new and completely original that hadn't been done before. Vulture's costume in Spider-Man Homecoming is mechanical, an exo-suit, created from stolen Chitauri technology. One could assume it has also been made using Ultron and even Dark Elf technologies as well, from the various battles members of the Avengers have had throughout the years. 
Adrian Toomes as the suit's pilot, and its designer was Phineas Mason, the tinkerer. Its wings house massive turbines allowing it to fly. The wings can be remotely controlled by the pilot when they are not wearing them. Each of the feathers are sharp blades that can be used as a means of attack or to slice through obstacles. Toomes himself wears special arm gauntlets that not only allow him to control the wings, but give him increased strength as well. On his feet are mechanical talons that he can use to carry heavy loads while in flight, whether they be stolen goods or, well, Spider-Man. The Vulture's suit in this movie is brilliantly designed. Each element is faithful to the source material and makes sense within the confines of not only Toomes' motivations, but also the overarching story of the MCU as well. It's a wonderful modernization, a badass modernization, and makes the Vulture more intimidating than I think any comic has made him before, that I know of. If I could be so bold, dare I say, but the MCU's Vulture may be one of the rare instances of a movie outdoing the comics. Is it safe to say that? Maybe. Then again, I'll probably get a bunch of backlash for saying that too, because movies could never, ever be better than the comics, right? Well, I've read a lot of Spider-Man comics, and I think the Vulture in Homecoming is better than any version I have read of the character. I'm just being honest. This has been Nerdgasm. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Comic vs. Screen. If so, hit that subscribe button to help support the channel, that bell icon to be notified of all new content I release, and head on over to Patreon.com and check out all the various rewards I have for you on there. As always, I will see you in the next one. Take care and stay nerdy.